Welcome back to the channel guys. In this video, let's talk some Bitcoin, Ethereum and Luna, three hot topics right now. If you enjoy the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel and also check out the pinned comment down below to support me further. Let's jump right on in here with some BTC price action. What we can see from this is currently we're consolidating in a bit of a downtrend here. We have some overhead resistance, a nice line has been drawn there and also some support on the way up here as well. And this is on the four hour time frame right now. So earlier this morning, we were at around 50,000 bucks and then we started to dip from the top of the range down to the bottom of the range. And everyone was seemingly going from bullish yesterday into more of a bearish tone as of right now. So the market is very emotional and the psychology at play is pretty evident to see. People are super bullish at the resistance points and super bearish at support. So I think this will continue for some time still, but just do keep a check of your emotions during this time period. I just think we will consolidate for a few more days here at least before we have a bit of a resolution to this, hopefully to the upside. So this from Will Clemente, earlier today, everyone thought we were going to the moon. If we sweep the lows again, everyone will probably think we're going to dump again. Still think we're going to consolidate and carve out a regime of mixed negative funding before eventually going higher. So that is the sentiment from Will and I share that with him right now. Now another chart here from Capriol Investments, Charles Edwards. And he put this, why this dip is not like May of 2021 the new multi-year Bitcoin reserve lows. So if you can see from this, this is the amount of Bitcoin on exchanges. It's the blue line. It was trending up when price was coming down. Hence, whales were sending their coins to exchanges to sell and take profits. Again, when this was increasing, the price of BTC was dumping, but the general trend has been from up to the top left to the bottom right down here. Things are going down once again. So as you can see over the last month and a half, a significant drop in the amount of Bitcoin on exchanges, and it is slowly but surely consistently going down here. So we are at lows for Bitcoin on exchanges. This means that at some point there will be a supply crisis and the price will increase as a result of any net buyers. And it's kind of expected now at this point, clearly we're coming up to mid-December that maybe we're not going to get any of these huge mammoth purchases coming in before the start of the new year. So tone down expectations for the rest of December is probably a wise move here, but I think January of 2022 will be a big one. But why are we not looking bearish at this point? Well, particularly when you look at some of the whale accounts, which you can go and find for yourself, or you can utilize good Twitter influencers like Mr. Crypto Messiah here. He does follow a load of accounts, ETH-based through Nansen, and also he does post these from time to time as well. But as he suggests, the DCA or So this is someone with a ton of Bitcoin, approximately 118,000 of them, increasing over time, dollar cost averaging their position up and up and up. One thing you're gonna recognize on all these whale charts, typically they are accumulating Bitcoin over a long term. There's another one down here, which is literally just accumulating. They've only sent seven Bitcoins and actually bought 30,000 of them. Consistent purchases, they're pretty much buying six every few hours here, which is incredible to see. But the biggest whales in the industry are continuing to add to their Bitcoin positions. If they keep adding, eventually the supply crisis will hit, price will go up. And what we've also noticed is that the ones who have been selling over this last dump down were newer investors. So a tale of two cities as per usual, you have the patient long-term whales always accumulating more and more BTC. And then those who are new to the market, essentially getting washed out of their positions, shaken, whatever you want to call it. The first time they see a big dip, they end up selling out as they think we're about to crash to oblivion. So funds moving from impatient hands to patient hands. And I think for anyone who's not actively like really trading this market with more of a buy and hold mentality like myself, you just have to take a multi-year approach to really make it in this industry. Now let's look at the ETH chart here. This is ETH to BTC. And this was the previous line of resistance at around 0.08. Bitcoin per Ethereum. And over the last few days here, we've got one, two, three, four, five days of pretty much consistent growth. We're now pushing towards 0 0.09 BTC per ETH. And this just looks super, super strong. Ethereum was hardly affected by the dump down. And I think we will see increased institutional flows of money into Ethereum come the start of next year. It's already happening right now, but I think we will see big allocations coming very soon. So one half of Three Arrows Capital is Kyle Davis. And he posted this yesterday. In a couple of weeks, I won't be able to even see the weekend's flash crash on a chart. 
leverage traders and tiny handed VCs are out. Macro is mooning, resume the super cycle. So super bullish there. You have to be aware that these guys do often post like PSYOP posts where they're sometimes going against what they're actually saying. So take it with a grain of salt when you have some of the richest investors in the world tweeting out. But macro wise, what's happening right now? Well, Congress considering raising the national debt in the US by $2 trillion. Checking in on the news this morning as well. And it does seem that this is going to go through. So as tech dev posts down here, what's a few trillion amongst friends tagging Mr. Benjamin Cowan. So are we going to see increased spending is tapering delayed for a further few months? Well, it certainly seems it could be that way. So this is part of the bullish macro landscape. Then if we just post over to here, someone posted this ridiculous picture, Janet Yellen at a casino. That was just under that previous post from Walter Bloomberg there. So in terms of that ETH narrative, we're seeing huge outflows from major exchanges here. 91,000 ETH left the accounts of FTX, Binance and Coinbase. And these have been flowing to none other than Three Arrows Capital. So Kyle Davis and Sue Zhu. And if you just scroll down here, Sue said this, and this is where you've got to see the wood from the trees because if we think about, I think it was a week ago, Sue was saying that Ethereum was unusable, that he had abandoned ETH effectively, all these kind of hyperbolic terms were being used. But as you can see from this, he's purchasing a ton of Ethereum. So always take it with a grain of salt what these guys are tweeting. So he said, look, I couldn't just let you guys jerk off watching the burn, the Ethereum burn without me. ETH L1 is still unusable for newcomers. Show it to your grandma if you don't believe me. I'll still bid it hard on any panic dump like this weekend, obviously. 100,000 ETH is dust for what it's worth. More will be coming. So they're going to continue to add to their ETH positions. And here is that post down here. Yes, I've abandoned Ethereum despite supporting it in the past. This guy's saying that this is called manipulation. I don't know if we can call tweets from VCs manipulation at this point, but it certainly is a contentious point because these guys obviously have a lot of influence in the market. They have 372,000 followers to his Twitter account there. And pretty much most of the time you trade the opposite of what he tweets or at least they trade what the opposite of his tweets are so it looks like they're super bullish on ethereum so the narrative for eth super strong hopefully we're going to see some continued upside for btc in the not too distant future once we have a period of consolidation here but in general both of those coins bitcoin and eth not looking too bad in my perspective I just think we have to be aware that this cycle is going to go on for a bit longer than we all expected and thus patience is key let's jump into some lunar news so first and foremost orion money has an ama right now with polygon network so orion money is essentially the trojan horse for anchor taking anchor and putting it onto all the other chains it's already on ethereum l1 and here it is on l2 scaling solution polygon matic i think what they're going to announce here is the extension or increased amount of deposits you can make to orion money on polygon so as of right now, it was a $5,000 limit. So what you can do is using their saver program, take any stable coin, USDT, USDC, UST, or DAI, I think it was just those four, and then you can take them to the saver account on Orion, and you'll get 15% APY on those. In the background, they will take all of these various stable coins, send them over to Anchor Protocol, on the Terra blockchain and then deposit them and make a nice spread there. So as someone put down here, does Orion still have deposit caps or something? Why all the 5Ks? And they said this, it is 5K per deposit at the moment, but we plan to increase the limit to 100,000 tomorrow. I think that will be a subject at that AMA and then to a million dollars in a couple of weeks time. So you could have whales on Polygon easily tapping into the tremendous rates through Orion via Anchor Protocol, getting 15% on stables. Of course, you've got to pose the question, why not just go the extra step yourself, bridge your funds over to Terra and get 19.49% rather than letting Orion take a cut. But that's a story for a different day. But all of this will mean a ton of UST demand. UST demand equals Lunar Burn. Some more lunar bullish stuff here. So this was a thread posted by Nicholas Flamel. Remember that the rumor Terra is raising a billion dollars. They said Binance was investing 300 million, 300 million from three hours capital and 300 million from elsewhere. If we just follow the rabbit hole here. So this was posted by Newton, which is a crypto exchange in Canada. We're sunsetting XRP and USDT due to regulatory issues. They're delisting XRP and USDT. So this was fuel to the fire that UST is about to have a much bigger say 
in the market overall with exchanges starting to list it as a base pair. So Flamel is ever the massive Luna bull here. If something like this happens, oh my God, four digit Luna could happen faster than we think. So this is the post that they're referring to here. Well, this individual here, Mr. Crypto Dolphin, is suggesting that the amount of burn to Luna is not normal and does not correlate to a demand for UST on the main drivers, which are Mirror Protocol, Anchor, and the Chai app. And also, if it was a big whale that was capitulating their Luna into UST, it would make no sense to do so continually at the rate that's been going on. There seems to be heavy, continued demand for UST, and this could be linked to something a lot bigger, i.e. the unwinding of stable coins here, such as USDT is the speculation. So he says, yes, it might be time where the big investors and the players like Binance and FTX are going to finally add UST base pairs, but have you stopped to think why? So within this, he then references this. I wonder if the Crypto Avengers hearing with US banks this Wednesday, which is today, will mark the day when this intrinsic layer of leverage will finally be at risk. At the end of the day, USDC market cap has been growing bigger than USDT since the news around the Eastern markets. So there seems to be some FUD around Eastern markets here, but it does seem from this that there is some de-risking from people using USDT in Eastern markets. So he goes on here, who knows, it might be coincidence, but it might be that it's not. And if there's a case that USDT's commercial paper might be in danger, UST would therefore be a healthy alternative as USDC works as a stopgap before regulations and banks get to that as well. So two dates cited here, December 8th today with that case going on and also December the 15th as well. TLDR, what if all of this lunar burn is in preparation of something with insane UST demand, i.e. the exchange pair listings in anticipation of something big happening to the status quo of stables. So if we did see a bit of a collapse here for USDT and UST could take some of the reins here, you would see insane demand for that stable coin. And thus the lunar burning would be absolutely ridiculous. And as he says, brace yourselves and hang on to the Luna. And then he pretty much finishes off suggesting that the next two weeks will rinse tons of people if we go through a bit of a chop here. Regardless of directional bias, think about your risk to reward. So I think there's some clear front runners here in the market right now. The likes of Ethereum, Luna, Polygon, in my eyes, just look some of the safest bets in cryptocurrency right now. And I referenced this the other day, but I wanted to show it on stream here. Google doesn't know, but Binance does. This was from Dan Q R when he was actually Googling Luna underscore UST on Binance, and it was coming up with a search result on the Binance website. This was then redacted, but clearly they have things set up and ready to go for UST to be a stable coin pair on here, which is no real surprise when they've just invested 300 million into Terra. And then the marketing machine, Do Kwon, continues here. TerraSwap producing more fees than Bitcoin currently. Bitcoin's 24-hour fees here, pretty much half a million dollars. TerraSwap doing 600K. So many reasons to be super bullish on Luna going into the back end of this year. Here we have the UST market cap continuing to go up and up and up. No real signs of slowdown. And then we have the Luna price chart here as well, which continues to pump and dump, pump and dump. But clearly we can see the trajectory of this is to the top right hand corner. So dips are my friends for buying, not financial advice. And then just to round off the episode here, this was a tweet from Elio that really hit home yesterday. If you couldn't sleep during the last correction, you're overexposed. Take some risk off during this bounce. It's good for your health. So I think a lot of people have really been emotionally drained by what's gone on. The fact that the market can go both ways. You can make big gains one month and then lose them and give them all back to the market in the next month. A lot of people sitting on a lot of unrealized profits. So this is something to consider for yourselves. If you are struggling to cope with the volatility in the market, well, this is par for the course. It's going to happen time and time again. You've got to make sure you are taking profits regularly. Or you can do like this guy down here, which is hilarious. Nope, I hold for life-changing gains or lose it all, nothing in between. And he replies, balls to the wall. So you kind of have this mentality with a lot of people who are in this to either make it or not and are willing to take on big risks. But on the flip side, for the majority of people, the best way is just to keep your exposure muted. Always have a bank of stable coins on the side for these dips and just regularly take profits out of the market. Crypto is going to go up potentially 100x by the year 2030. And so along the way, 
day, just extracting profit from time to time will keep you sane. And in the long run, it probably won't even matter that much if you're taking out 10% here and there, because if we 100X, everything is going to absolutely moon anyway. So if you need a cash out plan, check out my video. I will leave it at the end of this one. So there we have it, covered a few bases here, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and the Terra Luna ecosystem. All of these super exciting right now. I think what we're gonna see is continued consolidation. Potentially the altcoins will continue to run. There's just a lot of money waiting on the sidelines. As soon as anything ticks a little bit bullish, you can see people are aping back in. Matic's pretty much pushing towards all time highs. A load of these other coins as well. You can kind of see the money flows right now. So trying to get on board with the these trains as they're leaving the station is probably the best risk to reward strategy. We don't really need to go chasing the micro micro caps at this point. So I hope you enjoyed the episode. I will catch you guys tomorrow in the next one. If you want to sign up to my Patreon, we are doing a Zoom live stream tomorrow as well. Thank you for watching and goodbye.